The majority of the time you spend in Flash will be creating motion tweens. However, that name is a bit deceptive because a motion tween doesn't necessarily mean you're animating movement. Instead, you could be animating size, color, rotation, or all of these simultaneously. In other words, a motion tween simply means you're animating properties of an object over time. Let's take a look at how this works. On my stage, I have a gradient background and then a separate layer for a star. I've locked the background so that I don't mess with that layer. For my star, I want to man animate it to move across the stage. To do this, I need to insert a motion tween. Now, a lot of people like to click the object and then do insert motion tween, and it'll say it needs to be a movie clip or a symbol in order to be a tween. Do you want to convert it? You can click OK, and what it's going to do, and don't worry about the fact that the background hasn't shown up with it, we'll fix that in a second. What it's going to do is in your library, it's going to give turn this into a symbol called symbol 1. <clears throat> the reason why I don't like to do this is because if you're creating something complex, all of a sudden you have these generic names for 10 or 15 symbols. So I'm going to undo that and show you the way that I like to do it. Instead, I like to convert this to a symbol first, and then it has no problem when it's going to add a motion tween. I'll click the object, go to Modify, and choose Convert to Symbol. I'm going to change it to Movie Clip. You only use a button when you're actually creating a button, and then a Movie Clip is what you're most often going to use. A graphic symbol, that one you don't use a lot. You can do it for some basic, basic animation, but Movie Clip is more versatile, so I would just always choose Movie Clip if you're in doubt, except for buttons. But I'll choose Movie Clip, and I like to name it with MC so that I know it's a Movie Clip, and I'll give it a unique name, Star. This is what we call ca camel lettering, where the first thing is not capitalized, but every other word after that starts with a capital letter. I'll click OK, and now with that object selected, it is a symbol, I can go to Insert and Motion Tween. So it automatically added enough animation to the 24th frame because I have 24 frames per second and it assumes I at least want this animation to be a second long. The reason why my background isn't showing up is because right now the background is only on the first frame. So to give the background a little bit more time so it lasts for the rest of the animation, I can click the point where I want the background to last till, go to Insert, Timeline, and choose Frame. Now back to this motion tween. It turned blue and that lets you know that this is a regular motion tween and we have a keyframe on frame one which is the star. So we need to tell it as the keyframers what it should look like on frame one and what it should look like on frame 25. So on frame one, let's say I want it to be on the left hand side of the stage. And on frame 24, I moved my playhead to that spot and that indicates the flash this is the spot I want to work on right now. So at this point in time, I want my star to be on the right hand side of the stage. So now we can see a motion path and I can scrub my playhead and see that animation. In addition, if I hover over, you can see I have the object selected. I don't have the timeline necessarily selected, but your mouse will all of a sudden get this curve on it and this allows you to create an arc. So that looks pretty good to me. I'm scrubbing the playhead to test it out, but I can also do Command Return on a Mac or Control Enter on a PC to watch this animation. Now this animation goes a little bit too fast for me. So instead of changing the frame rate, which if I did and test it out, it does go slower, but it gets a little bit choppy. Instead of doing that, I'll keep it at 24 and I want to stretch out the length in which this animation happens. So I'll go back to a normal frame size and with a motion tween if you hover around on the right or the left side of the animation you'll get the left right arrow which tells you you can stretch this. So this is going to stretch to the hundredth frame and now you can see my last keyframe is there and you see a lot of little dots on the motion path and those are actual frames in between. So now we have a much smoother motion happening and it lasts a little bit longer. 
And again, I want my background to last that long so I can right click on it and choose insert frame. Or the keyboard shortcut that I use is F5. Let's test this out. And even if that's a little bit too slow, and it kind of is, I can move this down here. Maybe we'll just go to 60. And let's see how that works. That's a little bit better. So if I want to delete all these frames so that it just lasts till 60, I can remove frames. So like I said, a motion tween doesn't necessarily have to be motion. It could also be things like changing the color. So at this point, my star is yellow. But let's say by, let's say frame 30, I want it to be blue. So I can click on that object and there's a color effect. And this only happens if you have this as a movie clip. So I can choose tint and I want it to have a tint of let's do blue and then maybe by the 60th I want it to have a tint of pink so now when I watch this you should see it change colors while simultaneously moving so you can change properties. I can even change size from here. Let's say I want it to be really small. I can click on that object and make it small. And because I've already set this keyframe, I can come here and make it really big. And then it's gonna grow. And I can even do rotation. So by this point, maybe I want it to rotate a couple of times. Let's see if that worked. And there we go. So again, a motion tween is animating properties over time. It doesn't always have to be motion even though this does, but I could be animating the color, the brightness. I could have it fade in or fade out. I could have it rotate, move across the stage, whatever I wanna do. And that's how you create a motion tween. Now for this one, I did have it stretch so it had more time. But let's say at this point I want it to be on the stage and just stop and wait for a second. All I have to do is let's say frame 90 I can highlight these and hit F5 on my keyboard to add more time. And that's just going to add more time that it sits there. Let's watch this one more time and it stops and just waits. Then it'll loop. So hopefully that gives you an idea of the basic animation process and will make it easier for you to create your own flash projects and your own animations.